Today's presentation will be a discussion about position feedback as it relates to servo and stepper applications. The topics we will be reviewing are basic control loops, both closed loop and open loop as they relate to motion. We will look at compare a comparison chart of servo and stepper control, followed by a discussion of closed loop and open loop control as they relate to servo and stepper control. Then we'll round out the presentation with a look at the advances in stepper control relative to position feedback. There are two basic control methods, closed loop, which includes a feedback loop as part of the overall system, and open loop, which does not include feedback as part of the control scheme. Let's start by taking a look at the basic operation of a closed loop system. In a closed loop control system, the error signal, which is the difference between the input signal and the feedback signal, is fed to the controller to reduce the system's error and bring the output of the system back to a desired value. As you can see from the diagram on the left, a controller initiates a process that produces an output, in our case, motion, and an error signal or feedback, typically an encoder, supplied back to the controller, which makes the necessary adjustments to the process to produce the desired output. Some of the key features of a closed loop system are feedback allows for error correction, which in turn provides reliable positioning, and in some applications can even eliminate the need for other sensors, such as clockwise and counterclockwise end limits and homing switches. You must, however, consider this feedback will add cost. Tuning is required to eliminate slow response within the system or overshoot of the desired position. All of this leads to a more complex control scheme. Now let's take a look at an open loop system. An open loop system is a type of continuous control system in which the output has no influence or effect on the control action of the input signal. In other words, in an open loop control system, the output is neither measured nor fed back for comparison with the input. Some of the key features of an open loop system are there is no feedback required, which in turn leads to a simpler construction. They can be very accurate when sized properly, and open loop systems are generally more stable. Some of the considerations of an open loop system are there is no method to detect stall, so if the motor stops, we will be unaware of that. We cannot correct for motion errors. And if the position is lost during a power cycle, there's no way to reestablish position on power up. This simple table highlights some of the key differences between a servo system and a stepper system. The most obvious is the control method. A servo is a closed loop system and a stepper is an open loop system. This means a servo system requires feedback, while a stepper system can require, can operate with or without an encoder. For servos, the feedback options such as resolver, hyperface, or digital feedback are dependent on a particular control system, where steppers use incremental or absolute encoders. Servos require tuning for proper operations, and steppers do not. Because of the present feedback, Servos can have stall detection, where steppers, if the encoder is added, can provide some stall detection. Overall, the system cost of a servo will be slightly higher than that of a stepper for similar, uh, similar operation. Focusing on these two specific motion types, let's look at how each fits into the respective control scheme, starting with a servo. In a servo system, feedback provides information that is necessary for the proper phasing and control of the motor current. Based on commands from the control unit, the driver supplies the motor current, which is continually adjusted based on the motor, control, motor feedback. For proper motion, the system must be tuned. Because there is no holding torque at rest, a holding brake is often required, specifically for vertical applications. Benefits of a servo system are 
torque control can be achieved, which in steppers is something that is either very difficult to do or cannot be done at all. They can manage complex coordinating motion because of the feedback. They only use the power or current required for the motion because of the continuous control loop between the feedback and the controller. This reduction of motor current leads to less motor heating. And because of the feedback loop, they are less sensitive to external forces. A good example of how servos take advantage of their closed loop design is a capping application. One of the advanced features a closed loop system can provide is torque control of the motor. Through continuous monitoring of motor feedback, the control unit can limit the current to the motor, thus limiting the torque. This allows for repeatable and accurate application of the caps as they rotated onto the bottle. Fun fact, did you know a thermostat is another example of a closed loop control system? Now let's take a look at a stepper. For a stepper system, current is switched on and off based on information from the controlling unit. The system runs as commanded with no adjustment based on any system feedback. Unlike a servo, the stepper drives out, drive outputs constant current through the move cycle. Because the stepper is a DC system, full current to the motor can be maintained at rest, eliminating the need for a holding brake. With a stepper system, we assume the motion profile is executed as defined by the control unit. Some of the benefits of a stepper system are micro-stepping of the motor current allows for precise positioning. Uh, they provide excellent low speed stability. Uh, there is no feedback required, which provides a lower cost option when compared to a servo. A common application for steppers would be an indexing conveyor application. In this type of application and similar indexing applications, feedback is not required for consistent operation. Each move is independent of the previous move and a properly sized motor will execute commands as expected. The benefits of a stepper solution in these types of applications are lower cost, there is no tuning required, and it's a much simpler control method, which makes it an excellent choice for indexing applications. Did you know most consumer and commercial grade 3D printers use open loop stepper control? Although steppers do not require feedback, many modern controls, stepper controls can take advantage of the benefits an encoder can provide. If you've thumbed through a number of related trade magazines, you will find several articles extolling the virtue of encoder feedback for stepper control. Why use encoders with steppers? Encoders are added to take advantage of additional functions users have come to expect in motion control. These encoders can be incremental or absolute, depending on, upon the feature set required. Benefits of stepper and encoder are stall detection, which means we can monitor whether or not the shaft is moving as commanded or has stopped motion altogether. We can take advantage of move verification, which means we can monitor whether or not the move has completed to the position we asked it to go to. If it hasn't, we can then do what is called endpoint correction, which is basically a secondary move, which completes the move, the original previous move, as commanded. And we can also do electronic gearing, which allows us to monitor the position of a, one motor and command a secondary motor to follow that motor as desired. Let's start by looking at incremental feedback with steppers. An incremental encoder generates a pulse count based on a change in shaft position. This change is referred to as relative position. It does not tell the user where it is, but how it has far has traveled since the last position. Incremental encoders are a good choice for applications that require speed monitoring as well as position monitoring. Incremental encoders also carry a lower cost when compared to absolute position feedback. One application that can take advantage of incremental encoder technology is a dosing pump. Dosing pumps are used to dispense precise amounts of liquid for filling applications. They are used extensively in pharmaceuticals where repeatability and reliability are a must. 
The encoder feedback is used to verify the move was completed as expected. If something unexpected occurs during the move cycle, the control unit can use the data from the incremental encoder to report that the particular move did not complete as expected and the system can react accordingly. Other applications that can benefit from incremental encoder feedback are electronic gearing multiple axis, indexing functions, and cut to length applications. Now for absolute position feedback. Absolute encoders provide position value of a shaft. It knows where it is at any given point of time. Because of this, it can eliminate the need for homing on power-up and in-between move cycles. The absolute position feedback can be either single turn or multi-turn, and it can detect a change in position even if power is lost. Absolute encoders are ideal for linear applications. As the motor shaft rotates clockwise and counterclockwise, the control unit is continuously monitoring the motor shaft and thus the position of the linear actuator. If power is lost to the control unit, the absolute encoder can be used to reestablish position of linear actuator once power is returned to the control unit, eliminating the need for a home cycle on every power up. Similar applications that can benefit from absolute encoders include edge guide adjustments, automated assembly, screw jacks, and vision systems. Before we get to the Q&A section, I want to direct your attention to resources available from our website. You can find additional articles on this technology and other technology provided by AMCI, as well as other educational webinars and product videos, and any product brochures you may find of interest. So now for the Q&A. Please use the chat feature for any questions you may have. The chat can be found at the top of the screen in that little bubble. Okay, we have a question here. Um, the question was, what is Hyperface? Uh, Hyperface uh, is, is an encoder technology um, that is basically, as it powers up, it gives you a particular uh, position of the shaft on power up. And then uh, once it powers up, um, it basically uses an incremental signal to track position um, after that particular point. Um, it's used uh, typically in servo applications uh, because of its ability for fast reaction once the motor powers up and starts running. Uh, because of the incremental signal, the uh, servo can react very quickly to changes in position uh, versus other types of position feedback such as SSI. Uh, we had one qu uh, person attending uh, ask if this uh, video will be available. Uh, this video will be emailed to all people who registered for the presentation, whether they were able to attend or not, and will also be made available to our website in the near future. Uh, I have a question here to, uh, and the question is, is there any way to control torque on AMCI stepper motors? Uh, there are methods to controlling torque. Um, it's a little bit more of an empirical method um, in the sense that, um, with the AMCI stepper controller, you can set the uh, motor current between each move cycle. So if I'm executing a particular move, um, where say I'm doing like inserting a part into another part, um, and I wanna basically limit the torque so I know exactly when to stop once that part gets inserted, um, you have the ability to reduce the amount of current flowing to the motor for a particular move, which in turn reduces the torque. Um, but to do that accurately, um, it will require you to do a couple of different tests of that particular move cycle so you know exactly what that current requirement is, um, and then um, move on accordingly. Let's see what we have here. Uh, the question is, what is the difference between an absolute encoder or a resolver? Um, in essence, they both execute the same function. Um, an absolute encoder and a resolver both pr provide absolute position of the shaft that they're monitoring. Uh, with an absolute encoder, we're typically looking at a digital signal. Uh, that digital signal can be an SSI signal. It can be um, an analog. It could be an analog signal. Um, it could be a digital, like a digital binary gray code, or, or a digital um, uh, gray code output. Uh, whereas a resolver is a, an analog signal. Uh, think of it as being a rotating transformer, where I accept 
excite the stator winding at a particular frequency and voltage. They're typically going to be high frequency, low voltage signals, say three, vol three volts RMS at five kilohertz. Um, and then um, that voltage is going to be excited in the rotor. And then as the ro rotor rotates, um, the signal levels being reported back from the rotor are going to be different um, as the shaft rotates. And by monitoring those changes in voltages between the rotor winding um, as it rotates, I can tell exactly where I am over one rotation. But in essence, they do the same thing, their absolute position feedback. Okay, we have another question here. Uh, the person is asking, are there limit switches still needed for stepper? Um, that depends on your system. Um, with a system where you're taking advantage of the multi-turn absolute encoder, like with an AMCI SMD integrated all-in-one motor, um, you don't necessarily need to have those limit switches. Um, because you have an absolute encoder, when you power it back up, you know exactly where you are. So uh, as long as you have your motor position synced with your encoder position, which is something that you can do easily with it with our controllers, there's no need for those uh, limit switches. Um, you may want to have them as a safety, um, but they're certainly not required. If you have no encoder feedback, you still may want to include those limit switches to prevent situations where um, someone didn't synchronize the position of the motor uh, with the um, ap actual application. Um, they didn't home it properly, so you want to make sure if you have a situation where going too far in a clockwise or counterclockwise uh, app, uh, profile would cause damage, you might want to still have those limit switches. We have a question here asking which has more precision, the servo or the stepper motor for labeling applications? Um, again, this is uh, one of those it depends questions. Um, steppers historically have been used extensively in labeling applications simply because in most labeling applications, simple labeling applications, um, we're looking at just a simple index function. So the complexity of a servo where we're doing things, um, you know, where we have tuning applications and all these other things that are required, um, they're not required for most labeling applications. Um, where a servo motor or some of the servo functions have an advantage versus a stepper in labeling applications is when you have very complex um, products you're trying to put a label on, some figure something with a, we're trying to go around a square with a curve uh, where you need to go different speeds with that label as it's being applied to the product. Um, you may want to use a servo because a servo can do much more complex motion profiles than you can with a stepper. Uh, with that said, um, AMCI stepper products have the ability to do what we call virtual access following. Well, where you can create a servo profile in Studio 5000 in an Allen Bradley PLC and take our stepper and follow that servo profile. So you're getting servo functionality at a stepper cost. Uh, someone was asking, why could you not use the brushless servo as a holding brake? Um, in most applications with a servo, um, at rest, a servo wants to have no current at rest. Um, and that's basically the whole concept of the control loop is I'm trying to correct for error. When it's at the position it's commanded to, it wants to reduce the current to zero. Um, and if there's any sort of force on that servo motor um, when it's at rest, it's going to push away from the, its desired position and create an error. So then the motor is going to adjust to that error. Um, it doesn't mean you can't use a, a servo when when there's no holding brake, it just means uh, you may have a little bit of hunting um, when it's at rest. In a lot of applications, that doesn't really cause any issues because there's other mechanical things going in place that's preventing um, that from being um, an issue, things like screw jacks and whatnot. Um, but if you have a poorly tuned system or um, anything of that nature, you'll see a little bit of hunting and pecking when a servo is at rest. Uh, where a stepper doesn't have that that issue. Uh, we have a question, how does the torque compare at higher RPM between a servo and a stepper? Um, at, this is one of the differentiators between servos and steppers. Um, a servos, because of their construction, are able to maintain a continuous course, uh, torque over very high speeds. So when you look at a servo chart, you'll see uh, the torque uh, maintains a very consistent level 
anywhere from say zero up to maybe 3000 RPM. Uh, whereas with a, a stepper of a similar frame size, you may have a higher output torque through, um, at, at equivalent speeds at lower speeds, say from say zero to a thousand RPM, but then that torque starts to drop off versus a servo. Um, we can push that torque curve out the stepper a little bit farther by going to an AC solution on the pop, on the stepper drive. Um, but overall, servos do have um, the ability to go higher speeds than a stepper um, and still maintain torque, and that's really just a function of how the motors are constructed. Okay, we have a question here. Uh, what can we change in the settings to reduce vibration on the stepper shaft? Uh, a lot of it's just a function of um, the stepper system and the complete system uh, mechanically and um, electrically. Uh, some AMCI systems um, have the ability to do what's called tuning. So you can do a little bit of a tuning feature. It's not as complex as a servo loop tuning, but you can do some tuning uh, of a stepper system. You know, once you have your system mechanically assembled, you, know, you can run some motion profiles and then run what's called auto tuning within the AMCI stepper system. And it will make some minor adjustments to how it switches the motor current on and off to reduce that um, vibration. You can also do things like micro-stepping, which can help reduce uh, shaft vibration or system vibration of a mechanical system in a stepper because the steps are much smaller with micro stepping. You don't get that mechanical ringing in between steps that you can when you have the system set up for, say, full step of a stepper system. Okay, uh, we have a question here. Uh, least expensive AMCI solution between a 1769 processor processor and three lower power pop excuse me three low power stepper motors outputs and drives um, AMCI has a lot of different solutions that can run with a 1769 processor um, without knowing all of the specific specifics of the application um, in most instances the AMCI integrated all-in-one solution is going to be the least expensive option um, it's going to be the motor drive and control all in one, and it's going to communicate to that 1769 processor uh, using Ethernet IP. So it eliminates the need for a separate stepper module and stepper drive because it's all in one. Um, and because of that, you're also going to reduce cabling. So um, you may compare it to some other solutions where you have an integrated motor and drive and then use a simple PTO function on the PLC processor. But when you start looking at things like eliminating hardware as far as wiring is concerned um, and the additional need for a module, the, um, the integrated solution tends to be the lowest cost option. But um, if you have any particular application in mind, um, certainly reach out um, to us at uh, amci.com through either a chat or calling in and we can go through your specific application. Okay, the follow-up to that question is it needs to accept a PTO output as well from, from the MicroLogix 1400 and 1100. Um, in that case, the uh, integrated stepper drive and motor would be the lowest cost option um, because of the onboard PTO of the MicroLogix 1762 uh, PLCs. Um, the only thing I would say buyer beware at that point is um, there's a lot – there's um, – very much reduced functionality between the simple PTOs that you have with the MicroLogix 1400 and 1100 than you have with the 1769 processors using the Ethernet IP control. Um, so if you have anything beyond simple point-to-point -point moves and low-speed point-to-point -point moves um, with a Micro 1400 and 1100, um, I would still recommend taking advantage of the Ethernet IP solution. It might be marginally a more expensive solution than the motor and drive combination with the PTO input, but you have uh, much better functionality than you can get with the simple control. And then with the integrated solutions uh, all in one, you can also add things that may increase your overall design by having the ability to do things like absolute feedback or incremental feedback. Okay, seeing no other questions, um, 
I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. And again, as a reminder, uh, this presentation will be available uh, later on on our website. Uh, and if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out through our uh, chat at amci.com or uh, give us a call um, at 860 585 1254. Thank you and have a good day.